Wouldn't it be wonderful if materials were capable of more than one thing? What if the door was also the screen of a computer? What if these walls had the ability to control the climate of the room without the heating and cooling system that is housed somewhere else in this building? If we expected more of our materials, I think our materials will deliver. We really have to think on solutions which reduce unnecessary use of energy, unnecessary use of materials. We see more and more that our lifestyle is too much energy consumption. One big area where we can make a difference is adaptive architecture. So we know that we need to build over the next 20 years as many houses as we have built in the past 2000 years. The reason why we are developing this research uh, with smart materials is because we are interested in buildings that are able to change uh, their configuration to react to changing environmental conditions. So we need to design buildings that consume less energy and then consume less materials while still satisfying the basic needs of users. As a researcher, I like to look at new materials and to see how they can help us build better buildings. I think nature has produced a solution to nearly everything, to nearly every challenge in the world. I just have to find it. I don't want to build an oak. I want to transfer some functions of an oak into a technical material. What my community is after with living materials is to make a material that's now going to behave uh, or rival a device or a big structure. This is beyond just science and the stuff that teases my brain. This is materials development that can change the world. I think that my work is inherently interdisciplinary. Dr. Renata, she was really key, a key figure in my committee. She introduced me to these new materials, the magnetoactive elastomers. What I like so much about a Penn State is that, you know, it has such a huge emphasis on collaboration or interdisciplinary work. What I do, I need to collaborate. And, and Penn State is also a, a very supportive structure uh, to help people collaborate with each other. At Penn State, the intellectual capacity around materials transcends colleges, architecture, from the arts, from the social sciences, ethics, maybe even law. So I have met uh, Dr. Thomas Peck, we have interacted, I'm collaborating with uh, Professor Nice as well. We came upon a, a unique collaborator at University of Freiburg. There was a living material center. I didn't know anybody in Penn State and it was just a match. It was incredible. I really look forward to very close and very a fruitful collaboration over the next years and for the next generation of students too. Further advances in this area are, are just not going to be possible without collaborations outside the boundaries of traditional science. We can learn a lot from evolution to make good enough solutions with as little material energy as possible. And this drives me for making, yeah, let me say, a greener future. I think it's, you know, it sounds like a crazy idea, but it's actually possible. What I really hope for is to see these sustainable materials make technologies possible that are in harmony with the environment. Uh, this is, you know, sort of the dream we're working towards.